Hey guys, it's time for that update video I promised, and there's quite a bit of ground to cover, so if you were interested in me talking about some of the aftermath of the Google memo, or you just wanted to know about the future of the channel, I'll be including a list of timestamps in this video, so feel free to use them. I'm not sure if timestamps work on Mines, Vidme, or BitChute, so if you're watching there, sorry? Before we get started, I would just like to thank you guys for the tremendous support. Holy shit. The YouTube channel nearly doubled in subscribers, which is kind of ironic when you think about it. And 200 people have seen my video on this channel. A big reason that happened was thanks to Suit Yourself, a great content creator, very talented Australian cunt. If you're sub to this channel and don't know about Sooty, go check him out, especially if you're a political junkie. What brought the biggest amount of joy to me, however, was the amount of people that went through the trouble of sharing this video around and mirroring it. If it didn't translate in the video, I was pretty pissed off, and I wanted to tell as many people as I could about this nonsense on Google's part. So thanks for helping me with that, you guys kick ass. Speaking of Google nonsense, let's catch up on what's been going on since the Google memo was dropped and the YouTube Stasi was rolled out. The first thing to note would probably be that the writer of the memo in question, James Damore, was promptly fired by the CEO of Google. Why was James fired? Because science is sexist, of course. Science isn't even the truth, guys. I mean, that's what Slate says. Gotta love it when the article starts with, it's current year. It's 2015. This shouldn't be up for debate. Yeah, Slate seems to hate evolutionary psychology that destroys the postmodernist narrative, but pushing their own pseudoscience, that's fine. That's fine. The invention of whiteness, folks. That's that's a thing. One of the best hot takes on this comes from our good old friend Satan, I mean Susan whatever. It's getting to the point where there's just so much overlap and memeability for these people. Yesterday, after reading the news, my daughter asked me a question. Mom, is it true that there are biological reasons why there are fewer women in tech and leadership? That question, whether it's been asked outright, whispered quietly, or simply lingered in the back of someone's mind, has weighed heavily on me throughout my career in technology, though I've been lucky to work at a company where I've received a lot of support. Well, I'm convinced. Of course, while there's been a whole slew of articles that came up to browbeat Damore, there's a few good interviews with James Damore giving his own side of the story himself. Ironically, the reaction of Google, some of its employees, and much of the media seems to more or less prove James's point. There's a lack of diversity on thoughts and beliefs in the company. Moving on, let's talk about how YouTube's doing on cracking down on those terrorists. Just like I predicted, most of the first to be affected by this were the more controversial political commentary YouTubers, as they were hit with mass demonetization within a short space of each other. Leather bedecked internet badass and literally the only sane reason to be on Tumblr, Razorfist made a video asserting that this isn't just an algorithm checking for suitability for monetization, it's a blacklist. Link in the description, god fucking speed. While mass demonetization isn't the end of the world for all YouTubers, or at least the ones that aren't living off of it, I think the worst is yet to come. And if what Razorfist claims is correct, it's probably well underway. Hey, want some more bad news? Welcome to Perspective API, or as I like to call it, the precursor to George Orwell's worst nightmare. What if technology could help us improve conversations online? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, discussing things you care about can be difficult. The threat of abuse and harassment online means that many people stop expressing themselves and give up on seeking different opinions. Show of virtual hands everybody, what makes expressing yourself or finding different opinions harder for you? When you're free to chat with whoever and have as big a reach as you and everyone else can, or when you're being shadow banned or restrained by the platform you're using. Perspective is an API that makes it easier to host better conversations. The API uses machine learning models to score the perceived impact a comment might have on a conversation. Developers and publishers can use this score to give real-time feedback to commenters or help moderators do their job, or allow readers to more easily find relevant information as illustrated in two experiments below. We'll be releasing more machine learning models later in the year, but our first model identifies whether a comment could be perceived as toxic to a discussion. Well that's just... Jim fucking dandy. Let's see that in action, eh? Looking at this super solid airtight reading experiment, we see that the toxic comments are just, just fucking lame. Am I missing something? 
Did a bunch of Pentecostal preteens write these comments? Screw you, Trump supporters! The accepted comments are just as robotic, but you get the idea. This is data manipulation at work. The fun part is the writing experiment, where you can type something in and get the perceived toxicity of it. Go and play around with it. I think that the results might surprise you. Or depending on your outlook, it might not. The AI definitely needs some work though, if this rating is any indicator. The most telling of all is the partner experiment section. Right off the bat, you probably picked up on the correlation between these four websites. They're information based. Something tells me this AI isn't going to be doing much to spice up the conversations at these websites. Something tells me that the echo chamber around these sites is just only going to get even more constrictive. Okay, that's enough of that. Now it's time for the IAQ, or infrequently asked question. Gravy make a splash like Pippin. Shit, that's nothing. Splash. In my previous video addressing YouTube's new censorship initiative, you might have noticed I made somewhat of a, let's say, dramatic proclamation. Yeah, so I'm, I'm fucking done. Feel free to mirror this video on YouTube and share it around. Because at the end of this month, I'm nuking this fucking YouTube channel. While maybe I might have said this rather hastily, and the support I've gotten should tell me otherwise, YouTube has not made itself very appealing as of late. The short answer is, I don't know. I'll leave a straw poll link in the description. I'd like to get your take on this. Should I A. Give up on YouTube wholesale and stick to other platforms. B. Limit my uploads to things I don't think will be flagged. C. Keep doing what I'm doing. I'm kind of leaning on doing either A or B, honestly, but I'd love your input. The plan as of now is I upload to VidMe and just about everywhere else first. Gravy, he be clean like Windex. Just hit your mind with my index. It was flagged by YouTube for being inappropriate. This is the second community strike for the exact same reason, yet YouTube called this my first strike? I don't know. Maybe they mean my first strike after the time limit for the last restriction ran out. I made a crude update on this earlier, but to reiterate, I did my best to ensure no nudity or any other breaches of TOS were made, and the video is still up on Minds, VidMe, and BitChute. Somebody on Twitter said that having porn in the title might have been enough to have it taken down. But considering the other bad porn reviews are still up, I doubt this is why. Honestly, if you look up the word porn in your YouTube search bar, I'd argue you could find videos much more lewd and vulgar than mine. Regardless, I've made an appeal and we'll see what happens, I guess. Mr. Clean. Baby, why you flow so me? Mr. Clean. Pull up with my whole damn team. I have, for the most part. To my knowledge, the only Google-related platform I'm still using is YouTube. I've made the switch from Google Chrome to an offshoot of Firefox called Pale Moon. It's actually pretty nice. I like the easily customizable homepage, and it's pretty fast too. The toolbar is easy to use as well, and it isn't so cluttered. I'm using Proton Mail instead of Google Mail now, thanks to a suggestion from a commenter. I like it, it's an encrypted mail service from Switzerland, and it's been good to me so far. On a side note, as far as social media, my Facebook is a dead zone. I'm not even sure why I still even have it. I still have a Twitter, but a cool alternative I started using is Gab. Don't let the media fool you. There are alt writers on the app, but there's also a pretty wide array of people using it from all kinds of political backgrounds. There's a big political presence on there as of now, but if you're not into that, you can cater the app to your own likes and interests, and it's pretty accessible to anyone. I've been following the CEO, Andrew Torba, and I gotta say, from what I've seen of his actions and his character, I'm pretty impressed. He's made it very clear that Gab is a pro-free speech platform that doesn't restrain users or punish them for wrong thing. He wants everyone to have a voice, and it's a fucking shame that I feel the need to congratulate him for this. This should be common sense. Where did we go wrong in our society when it's stunning and brave to say, I like totally disagree with you, but I totally support your like right to believe that and I want to have a discussion and a debate. No shit. Argument and discussion is healthy. That's some day one shit. Anyway, there's one more big event in the room to address maybe some, some big ordeal going on in the country that I've yet to bring up some, some polarizing thing. I, I, I wonder what it could be. Happy days of
Happy days are here again. I'm going to go ahead and say that I'm probably not going to make a video on this subject. If I did make one, it probably wouldn't even be that serious. I can't help but make light of horrible situations. That's just who I am, I guess. But if you want my hard-hitting analysis of this, I'm going to go ahead and address the alt-left and yes, you do fucking exist, and the alt-right directly. This goes out to the alt-right. What the fuck are you doing? I'm gonna pretend I don't abhor your shitty, collectivist, identitarian cause for a second and play Deadpool's Advocate for a little bit. When you gather around with tiki torches shouting Blood and soil! Blood and soil! to see what what kind of image are you putting on display that night in charlottesville you were memed into oblivion and it was glorious nobody was on your side some people were standing for your right to assemble and your basic human rights me included but the alt-right as you know it will never be the same nobody will be cheering you on you will end up like black lives matter and every other identitarian movement you know how people in the south reacted to your rally we laughed our asses off Think about why that is, while you do like your polar opposites and wave the flag of a dead nation around. You are a joke. You are outsiders. You are failures. A woman died in Charlottesville over your selfish cause, and if it's proven in court that it was politically motivated, it won't matter whether or not you condoned it. Next is the alt-left, alt-left sympathizers, and Antifa especially. In fact, a lot of this is Antifa specific. Look, I know that some of you, while you were getting the fiery sermon from your shitty college professor who, once he put down the Starbucks coffee, raised his voice and told you about all the horrible things that happened in this country and how it should never happen again, you got a chubby in your pants and a lump in your throat. You thought you could be a hero. You thought you could change the world. You thought you could be on the right side of history. It only makes sense to punch a Nazi. Right? Maybe if there was a war going on and we were fighting an actual threat instead of some faggots whining about their identity. Wake the fuck up, sunshine. It's not 1941 anymore, and these neo-Nazis are not even close to what the SS were in their time. Nearly every time you guys are fighting in the streets, you're throwing the first punch, the first stone, the first bike lock. Where do you think the alt-right came from? How do you think they experienced any measurable growth? It's because long before Charlottesville, you buffoons were attacking people at random, destroying any property in sight, and claiming it was the evil Nazis, when there were so many examples that said otherwise. But Boston has shown us you don't even need the Nazis to be around, do you? You're at Boston, en masse, ignorantly screeching at a comparatively small group of people, led by an Indian guy, that were holding a free speech rally. You know how that must look, right? Only some of you have illusions of grandeur where you're saving the world from the Fourth Reich. The rest of you know exactly what you're doing, and it's been very clear. You're shouting your propaganda, waving around your communist flag, and encouraging political violence. Simply put, you're the definition of terrorists. The people put on the masks so that we can all become anonymous. And then therefore we are able to move more freely and do what we need to do, whether it is illegal or not. So some people will push back on that and say that the black bloc is to keep people from being identified and arrested when they break the law, when they commit crime. Damn right. It's a good way to avoid uh, the ramifications of law enforcement. It's 6 a.m. in Portland, Oregon, and we're headed to a bar with blacked out windows. It's no coincidence that your uniform includes covering up your face. This is what criminals do. This is what killers and thieves do. Oh, and this goes for both sides. Stop tearing down statues. As a history buff, you have no idea how infuriating this is. There are a ton of examples of the tearing down of monuments and historical objects, and it usually indicates a radical revision of history, and more often than not, violent uprising. If the sight of a dead historical figure, evil by today's standards or not, offends you, then fucking deal with it. Get counseling. 
figure out why you're so weak. Don't encourage these morons to do this shit. Those statues serve a purpose, believe it or not. For the average citizen, it's not an idol, it's a reminder. It sounds cliche, but it's totally true. If you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it. Let's not forget this. The group that's enjoying this insanity, the people that are thriving off this catastrophe, are the media. The mainstream press. Don't kid yourself, they are loving this. The MSM are going up like a dumpster fire, and they know it. This needs to be dragged out as long as it can for the sake of ratings. Kind of funny that that Russian conspiracy talk just went away, huh? Could it be that they've got a new moral panic to latch onto? Okay, I think I've made my point. Anyways, thanks for watching, and don't forget to cast your vote at the poll. And as always, keep on keeping on. Hey,